I would like to call on stage uh, a man who definitely needs no introduction, and I won't bore you with a long, long profile. He's an achiever, he's a Nigerian, and he's here to speak with us. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for Frank Umweke Jr. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. And um, I want to say that it is a very distinct privilege to have been invited here to share this platform with you this morning. And I want to thank Kunle and Yemi and uh, Ohima, right? Uh, for the very, very thought provoking talk that they gave in the last few minutes since we started this event. I have made very strenuous efforts to be here because of the importance that I touch to the role of young Nigerians in the future of our country. And um, I'll let out a little secret. It was just as I arrived in Lagos this morning for this purpose only, after now I'm going to be flying back to Abuja, that I received the email detailing to me what I ought to be speaking about. But when I received it, what it said was that you're going to be speaking for five minutes on how to engage government intelligently. And I said, God, what the hell is this? But I'm going to try to talk to you on how government can be engaged intelligently. And in a way, it is a, it is, it is a, it is a subject that I believe I'm comfortable with. Because when we had the Occupy Nigeria situation in January of 2012, I was privileged to have been invited to this present house, a church somewhere in Lekki Phase 1, to speak to young Nigerians about what the situation was all about. And as we tried to explain what the situation was all about, in our own understanding, there was a maddening crowd that said, no, 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 no. No matter how much you try to explain, they said they will have none of it. One of them even had the temerity to say to me, well, you're one of them, even though I left government almost five years earlier. But the important thing is that, yes, it told me that people look up to you, people expect certain things from you, people expect you to provide leadership, or at least to help to show the way. And we got together with a small team of young people. Some of them are here. Some of them are the visioners behind this program. And the question was, how do we begin to share information, substance, with young Nigerians? How do we help young Nigerians to understand the facts of any, of any situation and therefore be able to engage government in a more intelligent manner? I believe, for instance, that Occupy Nigeria presented a very profound opportunity not only for government to reform our institutions and change the way we do business in Nigeria, it provided opportunity for Nigerians to hold government accountable. Both parties failed, including myself. We failed. And that is the context in which I see what is happening today about Gen Voices and the vision that's been shared with me with some of the, uh, by, uh, uh, by some of the people who are behind this program. And I want to say to you that I believe very strongly that the future of Nigeria is in the hands of Nigeria's young people. We have one of the youngest populations in the world. But what is this population going to do? This population can do either of two things. This population can actually decide to learn, get an education, understand what is going on, and hold people in positions of authority responsible, accountable. I want you to mark this. People in positions of authority. The fact that you're in a position of authority does not make you a leader. It's two different things. You must understand this. Will this generation hold, hold our political people in political authority accountable? Or will this generation choose to simply complain perpetually, do nothing about it, and then turn around and blame everyone else except themselves? I believe that leadership and followership is shared responsibility. And we cannot afford, we cannot afford to abdicate our responsibility as citizens. I don't know how much of you, how many of you follow the situation in our country today. What is happening in the National Assembly, for instance? I listen to the drum beats of war, the irrational statements that are coming from every quarter. I want to see what ni young Nigerians have to say. When it is expedient, the political class have reason to actually encourage young Nigerians as to, to come out as thugs while their children, their families are in some of the most exotic places around the world. I've never seen any of them in front saying, listen, because I believe in this, I'm going to go forward with it. They have often incited hapless, hungry, poverty-stricken Nigerians who have no education. And this edu the, the, the education that they were denied because of the incompetence of our political leaders. And yet, we're happy to stay in front. 
We've seen young Nigerians, entertainers, who are happy to be used when it is time for the political campaigns and jettisoned immediately after the political campaigns. And I'm saying to you, do you have any sense of dignity? Do you understand what it means that somebody can pay you just a couple of millions as a license to go and steal billions? Today, it's no longer news. We have the pension scams, 120-something billion. Do you understand what it means for 123 billion to be taken out of the pension funds? And the banks cannot show where it is. Nobody seems to know where it is. In this 21st century, it makes no sense to me. And so, Gen Voices, what I want to say to you is, I'm going to quote for you the words of Barack Obama. Barack Obama said at the end of his campaign that one voice can change a room. And if one voice can change a room, it can change a state. And if one voice can change a state, it can change a country. If it can change a country, it can change the world. Gen Voices, you can change Nigeria. You can change Nigeria. My last point, Nelson Mandela and Suchi of Myanmar, they spent the greater part of their lives. They made huge personal sacrifices. Several times, Nelson Mandela was going to be released. And he said, no, it's not about personal freedoms. It's about human freedoms. And so I'm not going to be out of here. I'm not going to walk out of here unless I'm sure that my people will be free. And Suchi did the same thing. She was offered several opportunities to be out of jail, out of house arrest in Myanmar. But she said, no, my people must be free. And today, South Africa is a democracy, thanks to the likes of Nelson Mandela. And today, Myanmar is on the path to democracy, thanks to, the, to people like Aung Suu Kyi. In order to engage government intelligent, intelligently, you must be clear what your rights and responsibilities are. You must have the courage. You must have the staying power. May God help our country. Thank you.